All right, hello once again. This is Jeff Scott of Blackhawk Technical College. I've been going over the first six chapters of the Brad Daly and Brendan Daly, Sam's Teach Yourself, AngularJS, JavaScript, and jQuery all in one text, which is the text that will be used both for the 152, 167 Ajax and JavaScript website development and 152, 164 design and implementation projects classes for the spring 2016 semester at Blackhawk Technical College. In this lesson, lesson six, understanding and using JavaScript objects, we talk a little bit about JavaScript object notation, how to create and manipulate strings, how to work with arrays, and how to create your own custom objects. Again, I would strongly suggest that if you get time, you take a look at the hunlock.com because they've got a very good section in there on strings. You can see it's quite long but there's a lot of stuff in it. And uh, there's a section on arrays, which again is quite long, but it goes through many of the different array methods that you're going to see in there. All right, so let's get started. As mentioned, much of the code in JavaScript revolves around objects. There's four main types of objects that you will use. You will, you will use, rather, DOM objects, document object, model objects, built-in objects, objects that you define yourself, and jQuery objects. All right? And all will be discussed in this chapter, but especially the jQuery and the DOM will be in later chapters in much more depth and breadth of coverage. All right? So the first thing they talk about in here is how to create an object and object syntax. So notice if we do this, if we say var x equal new number 5. All right. Now, x right there, x is not a simple variable. It is an object. And the value that it holds is the number 5. Well, why is that important? Because when you're working with a language like JavaScript, JavaScript and I, sometimes I do this, some of you like it, some of you don't, but JavaScript is referred to as what's called an object-based language. What that means is you have object-oriented programming, also known as OOP, capabilities that you can or <clears throat> cannot use as desired. Now, if you contrast that with Java, Java is an object-oriented programming language. All right, so another word is it is a true OOP language. The difference is everything you do in Java revolves around the use of classes and objects. Whereas in JavaScript, you can use them, but you don't have to. In either language, if I create something, an object called user, and I want to be able to use the user's first name property, it's user dot followed by either a property name or a user dot followed by a method name. Properties are characteristics. They're data about an object. So if I was going to do a person, they might have a first name, a last name, they might have a height, they might have a width, a weight, or a, I'm sorry, a height and a weight, etc. If I was going to do a person, they might have the ability to eat, the ability to sleep, etc. So those would be methods also known as behaviors. Now this is a little bit confusing, but the author mentions here one of the coolest things about JavaScript is you can assign new property and method values on the fly. You can't do this in Java. All right, it says it doesn't matter if it's a built-in object, 
So you can even add things to existing JavaScript objects or your own. So it says the following is an example of adding a method and a property to the document object that exists in JavaScript. All right. It says we define a simple function that writes the document.me property to the browser. Then we assign a value to document.me and the function write me without parentheses. All right. Looks a little weird. So what we're doing here is we're creating our own function called write me that's supposed to do a document.write on whatever I set up document.me to be. So notice here, this says document.me equal Brad Daly. What that says is someplace in my program, I'm going to have a function called that's going to do a document.me. And whatever that has, that me has to be, is going to be Brad Daly. This says I'm going to have a function. So this says I'm going to have basically data. And this says I'm going to have a function in here that's called write me. And I want you to add that to my document. I'm adding this data, the me, to my document object. And here I'm adding a method. And here I'm calling the method. So notice when you add the method, you cannot use parens. When you call the method, you must use parens. All right. JavaScript has a number of built-in objects, such as the number object. And here's some of the stuff you can do with that, as shown here on page 176 in the book. You create objects so that you can either use built-in methods or write your own methods to be able to work with them. So I can do any of these things to a number object. I can get its exponential form. I can reduce it to a fixed number of decimal places, to a fixed length. I can convert it to a string, and I can grab its actual numeric value. Strings, and again, just sorry if I'm just beating the same drum again and again, but if I go to numbers, I'm going to find the same stuff in here. The number object, so it'll talk about it. The properties and the methods. So if you want more than I'm giving you, go out to hunlock.com, please. String, same kind of thing. Here are some of the string objects, ob object methods that you would use here on 177 and 178 to be able to work with strings. But again, I'd go out here and I would go out under Hunlock, I would go out to strings. And I would find the different methods for strings, which are here. And then there's examples of each, or virtually each one of these. So you can do all sorts of stuff with strings. Replace words, split a string into an array. All right, there's an example in here of manipulating strings. You can do the same kind of thing with arrays. You can take an array, which are disjoint objects, and you can combine them into one object if you want to. All right, or you can take a string, which is one object, and combine them into mul or split them into multiple objects. So you could take a string and make it into an array, and take an array and make it into a string. Again, Hunlock has a big thing here also, as mentioned, on arrays. So those different array methods are shown right here, along with examples of each one. These are much better than anything I could give you. JavaScript also supports date objects as we move up to page 186 here. Oops. Make that 187. So the date object, as it says, provides access to the current date and the current time. 
that you can use for a lot of things. Again, go to Hunlock. And notice there's a thing out on Hunlock on JavaScript dates, including much of the stuff that was already dis that's discussed in the chapter and all the major date methods that are in here. We're working with both hours, minutes, and seconds, months, days, and years. JavaScript has a math property and most of the things that you'd use in math are shown right here. To do things like round, you know, raise something to a power, use the square root, floor, ceiling, min, max. And there are some true arithmetic ones in there also. I don't believe Hunlock has anything that's specific to just math. But probably, let's see, JavaScript functions. Probably if you go out to numbers, I don't know if there's a thing out here in math for math or not. All right. So they do talk a little bit about it here, but not much. Regular expressions. <clears throat> and again, I'm blazing through all this stuff, but this is all stuff that we're going to learn and we're going to use in different parts of the class. With a regular expression, you're allowed to go and look through some, a string to see if a string holds something. This is really popular for going through a database to see if something exists or doesn't exist in a database. I means ignore, so it means case sensitive. G means global, which means find all. There's things like dollar signs that you can use, and many of you have seen this already. If you go out to regular-expression.info, I believe it is, there it is. Another ugly website that's unbelievably powerful and unbelievably well done. So that is it right there, if you have an interest http colon slash slash www.regular-expressions.info or just regular expressions.info will get you there also. Notice they have a quick start, a tutorial, and they even break it down by different languages. There's a JavaScript one right there. Regular expressions with JavaScript. This is among the best what I'm showing you are among the best things that I've found. Okay? If you don't if you can't find an object <clears throat> that meets your needs, you can create your own. Var user equal new object. There's a new object. Now that user has both a first and a last attribute. The first is Brad, the last is daily. Alright? You can also set it up like this. This is again done with what? Key value pairs key value pairs all right you can add methods to either built-in javascript objects or your own so here we're creating a new object called user we gave it a first name a last name now we're giving it a get full name or a make full name which we're just basically saying Combine the two, the first name and the last name together. The other thing that you can do in JavaScript is we just about are finished with the chapter here, but on 191 is the author talks about prototyping pattern. This is more complex. The author mentions that a prototyping pattern is implemented by defining the functions inside of a prototype attribute of the object rather than at the object itself. So what you can do is you can create things and then create prototypes that go along with them and hook those prototypes up into your object. We'll look at this example in class. But I kind of had enough for today. I did chapters 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now what I wanted to mention to you is probably, probably, we'll see how it goes. I may go on and also do chapters 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11, those five. Because the first 11 chapters in the book are 
generic in nature or they're just basic basically on javascript all right but really chapter 11 in the book uh, chapter 12 i should say so i've already gone through part one now and that's an introduction to angular js jquery and javascript development that was chapters one to six if i do seven through eleven that's implementing jquery and javascript in web pages okay and then part three which is chapters 12 through 19 are building richly interactive web pages with jQuery. That's the heart and soul of the class. And then finally, chapters 20 through 29 are an introduction to AngularJS. That's pretty much what I have for you for right now.